Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Adenosine triphosphate is also called as the energy currency of living organism, and we require energy to walk, to drink, or eat something, and various other processes as well. And the organelle that is responsible for generating ATP is mitochondria. That's why mitochondria is also called as the powerhouse of the cell. ATP is generated inside the mitochondria and then it moves outside and release energy and convert itself into ADP that stands for adenosine diphosphate with an inorganic phosphate group. Now the question is how does this teeny tiny molecule is going to provide energy? Let's take a closer look at the structure of this molecule. So this molecule have a nitrogenous base called as adenine that is attached with the ribose sugar and this ribose sugar is attached with three phosphate groups. The first phosphate group is called as alpha phosphate group, the second one is called as beta phosphate group and the third one is called as gamma phosphate group. The bond that is present between the alpha phosphate group and ribose sugar is called as ester bond and the bonds present between alpha and beta phosphate group or beta and gamma phosphate group, they are high energy bonds and they are called as anhydride bonds. Now what is the meaning of high energy bonds? Phosphorus or oxygen, they are both atoms. And when atoms have high energy, their electrons are present in the higher orbitals. And then they are going to jump back into their original orbitals by releasing energy. Just like if we are going to jump from a cliff, then we are going to possess high energy there. And when we are going to hit a ground or a stone, we are going to transfer that energy into that ground or stone. Just like in this picture, this wolf or dog, whatever it is, has dug a hole in that stone. Now the question is why the electrons of oxygen and phosphorus are present in high energy orbitals. Now if we look at the structure of this molecule, we can see a lot of negative charge present on oxygen atoms and negative charge repel each other. That's how the tension is created in this molecule. And the electrons are going to jump into the high orbitals and possess energy. Now this ATP have high energy bonds and ATP is going to release energy by breaking the bond present between gamma and beta phosphate group. This can be done by hydrolysis. And then this ATP is going to convert itself into ADP that stands for adenosine diphosphate by releasing free energy. This energy is approximately 7.3 kilocalories or 31 kilojoules per mole. A single ATP molecule can release this energy twice by converting from ATP to ADP and then this ADP can convert itself into AMP that stands for adenosine monophosphate by releasing the same amount of energy and that is 7.3 kilocalories. By this way, this ATP is going to couple itself with various reactions present in our body in order to perform different type of functions. So all the endothermic reactions when they are coupled with ATP, that is the exothermic reaction, the overall reaction is exothermic and that's how it is going to perform its function. ADP then go back into the mitochondria and convert itself back into ATP. This cycle is called as ATP-ADP energy cycle. The details of the cycle will be explained in a separate video. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care. Bye-bye.